Hello, I would like to cover a few tips about entering data in the Retail Inventory and Sales Manager template. You can find this template at inzara.blogspot.com and this is a blog page on the specific product and you can also find a link to this from the Premium Solutions section on the right sidebar on the blog inzara.blogspot.com. I'm going to open the template now so that we can see how it appears when you start using it uh, as soon as you download it. So this template uses the Excel's table feature extensively for data entry. You will find the Excel tables in all the sheets here, which are data entry sheets. The ones highlighted in green or shaded in green sheets, these are all sheets that do not require you to enter data, but it may require you to select a few things so that you can interact, but it doesn't require data entry per se. So the main data entry happens here in these six sheets at the beginning. All of them use Excel's table feature extensively for data entry. So I will cover a few tips about entering data into tables. So for example, this locations, this is also a table. And if you enter more information, the table will expand. And for example, if I type in warehouse two and then type enter, now you see that the table has now expanded. So how do I know that the table has expanded? You see this thin line around this location information and that's the border of the table. So now it has two values and if I type in here and then I enter one more, value, let's say warehouse three, and I type enter. And now you see that this has been expanded to three values. So the table is expanding. And that means that the new warehouse that I entered is now part of this table. And so this data will be used in all the calculations and other places. So this is what we want to make sure that the data is entering as part of the table. For example, if I type in here, and then type in information, nothing happens. And that's because we entered with a row in between. So Excel does not consider this as part of this table. It will just think it's a separate thing that we have in this sheet. So we should avoid having a row in between and then enter the data. So for example, if I delete this, if I go to this cell, and then if I type in warehouse four and I hit enter, now Excel automatically expands this. So this concept or this structure is true for many tables. For example, when we go to products table here, the same thing happens. The difference here in the products table is that when you begin, there is no product entered here. And so you have to start typing in fresh. Please make sure that you click in cell A6 and start typing. So for example, product ID one, Hit tab. When you hit tab, it moves to the to the to the right cell on the right. So in this case, it's the product name. So I can just type in product A and I hit tab. It goes to the next. So now we have actually entered one product um, basic information ID and name in the products table. And then if I go, for example, to the product report sheet. I will see that now this product ID and product name appears here. So this clearly means that the data is now being consumed by the templates calculations. So we have entered the data correctly because we started typing in in the first row available. If we, for example, uh, want to add more data to this table, add another product, then I would start typing in cell A7, start typing two, and then hit tab. And now you immediately see that um, you have um, entered another product because this thin line border here expanded to cover the next row. That means that this row is also now part of this products table. Um, you can also find out if you scroll to the right to the end of the table, you see this little edge here. This indicates that this is the corner of the table or the end of the table. So you can see that there are two rows now in this table. Um, actually, you can also manually extend this to three rows or you can take it back to only one row. So this is another way of manually adjusting your table 
um, extend by just clicking and dragging this. But if you're just typing information, make sure that just you type in in the next row possible. For example, these two are already part of this table. So please make sure that you start typing in from here. And this is this will make sure that the Excel automatically updates the table. If I type in here, Excel will not know this is part of the table. So it will not be included. And if I go to my product report, I would still see only product ID one and two. I will not see product ID three because it's really not part of the products table. So I'm gonna hit delete. And if I go here and type in product three, and then, so what you noticed here is that it gave you an error immediately after you typed in three. And that's because Excel is saying, um, I need you to check the product names and IDs table here. The product name is blank and we want to make sure that it is a, a value. So if I type it in, the error message goes away. So please make sure that you also look at the error message here. The error messages will also appear in the message board, which will indicate any possible data entry errors. So this will also help you to make sure that your data is actually in the right place. And so now we have entered three products in this um, products table and the information is now flowing in to the other sheets as expected. Now going back to the products table, there's another way you can find out that any specific cell is inside a table or not. If you click anywhere inside the table, you will see a table tools dialog box up here or a table tools ribbon up here. And then if I select any cell outside the table, that ribbon will disappear. So that's another way you can find out if the cell you are in is actually part of a table or not. Now let's cover another topic. For example, um, so far we covered how you can type the data, but sometimes you may have to just copy and paste the data from another source, or this would also be handy if you are um, create you're starting from a new file and if you have data from the old file you can just easily copy and paste it for example now i'm going to copy from another sheet that i have here the product id product name and then the product description and the product category information i have copied them from another sheet now i'm going to just paste them here so i will just do paste special as values so this is exactly what we need to do. And you can see Excel is giving you a preview and it looks like it's pasting correctly. So I'm gonna click on this and it is now pasted into values and you will get this message depending on your Excel settings because originally we had three values and now I'm pasting four on top of them. So that means now the table has to expand and it's asking whether it's okay. And if you say, okay, and now you can see four products have been entered and the table now has four rows of data and you can see that here and you can also go to the product report to see that now you have four rows so this is clearly working so what we did was copy the data from another source and i will show you what my other source is so i copied from here this is my sample file i'm copying it and then I just clicked, right click on the first cell, paste as values. And that would paste the new values on top of here. And if I want to, for example, paste another one, um, other set of products to append to this table, let's say I wanna add more. And please make sure that you don't click here and then paste, for example, let me do that. It will not get added to the table. I'm gonna do undo. If I click here and then I paste as values, now actually Excel has now added it. You can see here the line border here. This is all part of the table now and there are eight products now. But however, you have duplicate product names and product IDs, so there is an error message, so you need to correct. Um, so just to make sure that we covered how we can copy and paste the values, always paste them as values do not just do a paste because if you just do a regular paste, it'll bring in all the formats that you have. So it will be really messy if you're copying from a source which is formatted differently. So generally the recommendation is that 
please paste them as values just to keep things clean and simple paste them as values okay now we want to delete these four rows because they are really duplicates of this first set of four rows so the general recommendation for how to delete information from any of these excel tables is you select whichever ones you want to delete you don't need to select the entire row you can just select for example here let's say i want to delete these three i'll select these three right click delete table rows this is the recommended way of deleting information from your table you can see that now excel automatically took all the entire rows out and now you have only five um, products in your table and now there is still a duplicate product name so i can right click on one cell here to delete this specific table row and now there you go we've deleted it so this is how you should delete the data and we've already covered how you enter the data um, the other piece i want to um, mention here is that these tables or these sheets are all interrelated there are lots of dependencies once you enter the product name here for example if i go to the starting inventory sheet the product name will actually appear here instantly so this is how these tables are linked so make sure that you fill the information um, as much as possible in this order so fill in your setting sheet first then go to your products then inventory then partners then orders order details make sure you follow that order when you enter new products or new uh, data make sure you follow this um, this order that would make sure that the data is flowing consistently another thing is that please make sure that you fill in all the information you need um, as much as possible um, if it's relevant please fill them in don't leave them blank because that means that uh, if there is a calculation that is dependent on it that will not function and you can look in the help section to see whichever fields are required i would say for example the product id here and the product name i say this is required and should be unique so please refer to this and finally always refer back to the message board if there are any errors so please make sure that you follow the tips um, we covered in this video about entering the information in tables and also deleting information in the tables and if there are still any questions please uh, leave a comment or send me an email and i will definitely get back to you thank you